here is the bottle profile. So this is one half of the bottle. We're just taking this and we're dividing it right down through the middle and we're going to draw the profile of that bottle. In other words, the shape of it, the outline of it here with these dimensions. And then we're going to simply take this gray area and we're going to revolve that gray area. We're going to revolve that gray area around that center axis. To get the bottle shape. All right, so how do we do that? Well, this is just copying right now. You're just going to you're going to use those dimensions and you're going to trace it. So it's a series of drawing lines and curves. For that, I'm just going to start a new document. So I'm going to switch back and forth between screens. So I'm going to have this one open uh, with the dimensions and then I'm going to start copying them onto another sheet. So I'm going to create document. I'm going to call this pop bottle. And then I'm going to give it uh, my last name. You can use your last name or something unique so that yours stands out apart from all the others and say OK. So now I have a new blank document ready to go. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start down here on this end right here, which is the mouth of the bottle. OK, it's basically if I rotate this around. And down a little bit. We are going to start. We're going to start right here. And we're going to start sketching this end of the bottle. So what dimensions do we need? We need a couple of down here dimensions. The first one we're going to use is this. We're going to start with this line right here. This is the opening where the bottle where you pour the, uh, the soda out, the pop. And it is uh, 0.5 inches long. So we're going to draw a vertical line, 0.5 inches long. Now let's go grab the next dimension too. So I'm going to go up and then I'm going to go over to the left right here up and over to the left and I'm looking at this dimension so that's 0.5 up and then 0.265 to the left. So I'm going to start a sketch. I'm going to sketch on the front plane and then right click and make that view normal to the sketch plane so that everything is nice and flat for me. And then I'm going to start right on the origin and I'm going to draw a line so there's my line command. Click on line. Click on the origin to start. I'm just going to draw an arbitrary line and then I can modify it. So it's asking me in the white box there, what dimension do I want? Put in 0.5. There we go. And then remember, I'm going to draw a line to the left. So I just draw a line and then I enter in the number 0.625. Okay. And then I'm just going to hit escape for a minute. I'm going to look at what I did. Okay. I'll slide that over and I'm going to slide that one up. So now I have the first start of the bottle there, 0.5 up and 0.625 over. All right, here we go. We're going back. This is going to be. Uh, zoom in here in a good spot. All right, so let's go back to our drawing. So next we're going to zoom in. We're going to do this little bump right here. This little bump represents the flange on the bottle. What I mean by that is it's kind of where the cap comes down. So with this little part right here, this is what we're drawing next. That little feature right there. OK, so let's take a look at that feature. What are the dimensions of that feature? Zoom in a little bit. Well, we got to do a little bit of math because we need to know the length. What is the length of this little part here? So we're going to go up, over, and back down, up, over, back down. OK. What is this dimension right here? Well, it doesn't tell us directly. We have to do a little bit of uh, investigation. So I can see that this line is 0.5 and this is 0.625. That means that this little piece is just the difference. I just have to subtract. So subtract 0.625 minus 0.5 is of course 0.125. So I'm gonna go up 0.125. And then I have to find that little dimension right there. Well, actually, I got it. It's right here, 0 0.0623. So up 0.125 over 0 0.63. 0 
then back down 0.125. Up, over, down. 0 0.125, 0 0.063, 0 0.125. Got it. Let's do it. Bring up to my sketch, click the line button, start on the endpoint, go up, change the number to 0.125, go over, and then change that number. Well, let me zoom a little bit there. Go over, change that number, 0 0.0625. It rounds it to 0 0.063. And then, it's hard to see, back down. And you can see there's a little inference here. So it knows that, hey, do you want to make it the same as the last one? So I could either type in the number here, or if when you see that little dotted line, it's kind of locking it on. See how I'm bouncing my cursor a little bit, but it's kind of locked into that point like a magnet. I can use that. I'm just going to click there and it automatically makes it 0.125. Okay, let me move some dimensions out of the way here so you can see what we did. Okay, so there we were up, over, back down. All those dimensions are good. That's our little flange on that bottle. So what do we have so far? Okay, looking at this, up, over, up, up, down. So we have this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. We stopped right here. See that? So now we're going to do this little part right here. That's an easy one. It says it's 0.25. So where we left off, go over 0.25. Okay? Easy peasy. Zoom in. Pick the line command. Pick the endpoint. Go over. Click a line. Change it to 0.25. And enter. Good. Okay, now we're going to shift gears a little bit here because we're going to the curve. And I can't define the curve part yet. So right here is going to be a curve right in here. All right. We actually need to dis establish where the ends are and then make the curve connect the ends. So this curve, I can't put this curve in until I know where this endpoint is. And I'm actually going to finish most of it and put the curve in last. So you're saying, well, how can I jump the? How can I jump from here to here? Well, we know where this this uh, where this dot, this point right here. We know where it is in space because we have dimensions. So one of them is very easy. You can see from the edge of the bottle here, from the mouth, this 2.75, that's how far over it is from right to the left. Now I just need to know up and down, and I have to hunt for it. It's not so easy. It's not right here close by, but if I look over here on the very end, see this 1.25? That actually goes across to there, but it also goes across to here as well. So that one dimension, 1.25, is this line and this smaller line right there. Those are collinear. Those are on the same edge. And that's the big, if I look at my bottle, that is the big uh, outside part here and here. That's the biggest diameter of the bottle right there and right there, which is the biggest, biggest size. Okay, so those dimensions, let's uh, mark those down in our head. 2.75 is a dot here and 1.25 okay so we're going to try to locate this point in space so i go back to my uh sketch and i know i have to go over and up and that point is somewhere up in here somewhere up in here in space so i'm going to do some construction lines because this isn't really part of the bottle this is just trying to locate that point so i'm going to change to construction line which means it's not a part of the sketch geometry it's not part of the model. It's just a, a helpful temporary line. To grab my line command, I'm going to go over from here, and I'm going to go over, what was that number? 2.75, okay? And then I'm going to go up and go straight up, and that number, let's go straight up here and click a line. That number was 1.25. Okay, so these two lines, these uh, these are called phantom lines, where it's a dash, dot, dash, okay, S center lines. These are temporary. I just put those there so I could find that dot, okay? So later, I'm going to put a curve in, and I'm going to connect the curve from here down to that point, all right? I'm going to do that at the very end because I have two curves to do. But the good news is now I have a starting point for my next line, right? So these are in place. I'm just going to slide this over out of the way. Uh, I'm going to start here and I'm going to continue on with the rest of the bottle. Let me go back, look at my next dimension. So we just put this point right here in space. We put it right there. 
Now we can continue to the left, down to the left. So let's get those dimensions. All right, a little more math is in order here. So I can see that from this edge, again, this starting point, this is kind of my origin, remember? So all the dimensions kind of uh, start here. If I go over from here to the left, it's three. So the length of this little segment, this is next, the length of this little segment is going to be three minus 2.75. See those two dimensions? I'm just subtracting the small one from the big one. What's left over equals this. So that's 0.25. Okay, go back to my drawing. From that endpoint, draw a line, endpoint, go over, change it to, to uh, sorry, 0 0.25, 0 0.25. Okay, and hit escape. All right, so we got that little line. Let's go back and look what's next. All right, now it's a little, a little, this little recessed area, and you see this little part we're putting here. All that really is, is it's just the part where the label goes on the bottom, right? So this part right here, this lower lower part, right? That's just a little dip in there. The bottle comes over and kind of dips down. There's the label and then bumps back up. We're just making this smaller cylindrical part of the bottle now. So uh, again, right here, here's where we are. So let's go back, find those dimensions. And again, it's a little bit tricky here, but how can we find this? Oh, I see a dimension right here. How about this one? This is 1.188 from the center line here out to this edge. So now all I have to do is think, well, okay, I know where this edge is and I know where this one is. So the difference between this number, subtract this number, will give us that little portion right there, which is the same. Again, this one here and this one here are the same. So let's take 1.25 minus 1.188. If you're a little mathematically challenged, we just do 1.25. You can do this on a piece of scrap paper. Minus 1.188. And we get 0 0.062. Anybody remember what that is? 0 0.0625 is a sixteenth of an inch. So just the smallest increment on a tape measure. So, okay, let's go. We got some numbers in hand now. We're going to go straight down 0 0.062 or 0 0.0625, 0 0.062. So let's make a line, go down. It's a very short one. And we're going to put in 0 0.0623. 0 0.063, 0 0.063 from that math, okay? And then I'm gonna hit escape. You can see there's that little line we just created right there. Let's move this up out of the way. Move this down a little bit. All right, so now we're gonna make that long line to the left, okay? This is an easy one. There it is right there, 4.125. So from there to there, and then we're going to go ahead and do the one that's back up again, because I know what that is. So we're going to do two lines here, this one and this one. So uh, let's zoom out a little bit here where we can see. Let's move this out of the way and zoom this way a little bit. All right, from where we left off right here, a line starting right there over. This one's going to be 4.125. Okay, we'll zoom out a little bit to see where we ended up. And then we remembered from the last one, we just got to have to go back up a little bit to meet back up, and that's 0 0.063. Okay, awesome. We are killing it now. Look at this. Look at us go. Let me hit the escape. All right, so where we left off, right there, over and back up, is right here. So we're right there right now. We finished right there. So we, now we need this little segment here, straight across. Again, a little bit of math is in order here. So I can see from the far right-hand edge from my origin, I have to go over 7.75 here, and I need to subtract these two numbers. So this is 3 plus 4.125. So these two numbers added together, and subtract that total from this. 
So let's bring our calculator back. And that is 7.75, this number, minus 4.125 minus 3. 0 0.0625. Now, that is 5 eighths of an inch, 0 0.625. 0.625. So this number right here, this dimension is going to be 0.625. So right here, we're going to add another line from here. And this one is 0.625. Okay. Let's take a look at that close up. Hit escape, get out of that command. I'm going to move this out of the way a little bit and move this one over here. <clears throat> Um, sometimes I stumble with this, so if you see these two numbers, sometimes I'll say 0 0.0625. 0 0.0625 is one sixteenth of an inch. 0 0.625 is five eighths of an inch. Okay. Sometimes those stumble. 0 0.0625 is one sixteenth. That's a small number. 0 0.625, no zero in in between there, is five eighths of an inch. All right. So we are cranking it out. We are almost done with the main sketch. Let's look back and see where we are. We just finished this line segment right here, and we're back to a curve. And remember I said, we're going to put this curve and this curve in last. So how can we get to jump over to this point? Well, here, this one's actually not bad at all. We're just going to draw in this line and this line. And then all we'll have left is the curves here and here. So let's do this one. This is an easy one, really. Uh, there it is. 0.888, uh, sorry, 8.888. And remember from yesterday, um, a little bit of trivia here for you, maybe a little bit of uh, Twilight Zone, uh, what do you think kind of thing. But uh, remember, this is a Mountain Dew bottle. And for anyone with that little NASCAR history, uh, many years ago, there was a car, NASCAR car with a sponsorship of Mountain Dew. So it was the Mountain Dew race car, and it was driven by Dale Earnhardt Jr. And interestingly enough, believe it or not, Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s race car number on his Mountain Dew race car was 88. That was the door, that was his race car number, 88 for the Mountain Dew NASCAR. And if you look, this number is 8.888. Hmm. Makes you go, hmm. Is that a coincidence? I don't know. Uh, but we're going to use that point, uh, that 8.888. We're going to use that number. We're going to draw this line that represents the center line of the bottle. This is really just a, a rotation line, an axis of rotation. But we're going to draw it in there. Okay. And then we're going to draw this line vertically here. So we can see uh, 8.888 from right to left, and then uh, just one inch straight up. Okay, let's go do that part. We're going to get rid of these two. Remember, these were just construction lines. To clear things up, we don't need these any longer. I'm just going to... Uh, I'm going to escape. I'm going to click on that dimension and delete it. I'm going to click on that dimension and delete it. And click on that line and delete it. And click on that line and delete it. Remember, those were just to establish that point in space. We don't need those any longer. So to clean things up, let's get rid of them. Let's start with that line, that long, mysterious line along the center line. That one is going to be 8.888. Okay, and then remember, we're just going to go straight up one inch. One, enter. Okay, fantastic. Now you can see we're almost done. All we need is those two curves, one from here and one from here. Now, what I want you to look at at this bottle real closely for a moment is that these are tangent. Both of these curves are tangent at one point, but not at the other. So you see where here is a pretty nice smooth curve, but here it's an abrupt corner. And likewise here, uh, pretty smooth corner transition right there and abrupt corner here. So let's look at that in the profile view. Again, just to reiterate, a really smooth transition here, like a tangent. This, this curve is tangent right there. 
and it's a sharp corner here. Likewise, tangent here, sharp corner here. Okay, let's try that. So we're going to use this arc command right here, arc, and we're going to use tangent arc. The first line we're going to add is to this line, so we want it tangent to this line. So you don't pick the endpoint, don't start here, pick the line itself. If you pick the line, it'll start right there, and we're going to follow it over, we're going to come over, and now we're going to grab this endpoint. So we made a tangent here, but we added an endpoint here, okay? That gives us that smooth transition and the abrupt transition. Let's do one more. Same thing here. We want a tangent here and sharp point here. So grab your tangent arc again. Start here. Don't not the endpoint. Grab the line. Follow it over to the right. Hold on. Uh, when I grab that line, I want to make sure that I grab not in the left side of the line, but the right side of the line. So let me try that again. So I want to be I want to be toward I want to grab the line, but I want to grab not the left side, but the right side. And then I'll start my arc right there and then I'll follow it over to the end point. And again, don't draw the line here, draw it to the end point. And I want you to notice something when I completed that, you see how the gray area, uh, the inside turned gray. Let me do that again. Uh, arc, tangent arc, grab the uh, right side of the line and watch the gray area down in here. As soon as I make the connection and click it, it turned gray. That means that that area is ready for rotation. Okay, so we completed our sketch. This is our profile. Okay, now the, the real magic happens now. You can see there's the profile. I'm going to next click revolve. This button right here. I'm going to highlight that section. Here's my revolve down here. So I want it, I want that area, which it says face of sketch one, yes. And then I just need to pick the revolve axis. So I click on that and I want to pick this line right here. I want to revolve around that line. And there's the magic, okay? I'll do that one more time. So I kind of oriented myself here so I can see what's going on. There's my sketch I just completed. That's all of the lines that I just drew. It's shaded in in the middle because it's complete. I pick revolve. I pick the face and sketch I want to revolve. That's this area right here. Then I need the revolve axis. Click on that. Click on that. And there is your magic. There is your bottle. And accept that. And there it is. I'll finish the rest of this later, but the next thing we're going to do is shell. Actually, let's do it right, real quick. Shell is very easy. Shell is going to make the hollow. Shell is right here. Click shell. Click the face I want to remove. So I want to start hollowing out right here. I'm going to click that face. Then I just need to tell it the thickness. I'm going to make the thickness of my bottle, the wall thickness, 0 0.06. And select OK. And there it is. It's hollow now. OK. So you've got uh, you've got something to follow along. So I'm going to save this video and put it out uh, in Canvas for you. So if you want to follow along that on your own, uh, you can follow all the steps we did. Thanks for listening. We'll see you tomorrow.